Remember back when Americans were banned from traveling anywhere because of our high COVID-19 infection rate? Well, it seems like fortunately those days may be gone because in this video, I have a list of 15 places that you can travel right now as a US citizen. And this is in addition to my other video with 10 countries that are open for tourism to Americans and non-Americans alike right now. In this video, I'm gonna give you three very important pieces of information. Number one, where you can go. Number two, how many COVID-19 confirmed cases that country has. And number three, what do you need to do to be able to travel there? Do you need to register? Do you need to pass a negative COVID test? Do you need to quarantine? We're gonna get into all that and more. And if you're new here, I'm Kristen, and you're watching my channel, Traveling with Kristen, where I teach you how how to work online and travel the world like I've been doing through more than 60 countries in the last 15 plus years. And we're also having weekly COVID-19 travel updates, so make sure to subscribe if you're new here and let's jump into it. The first country on my list is the beautiful and highly underrated Adriatic destination of Albania. With less than 7,000 COVID-19 cases, Albania is a very affordable tourism destination and it's open to Americans without any special restrictions or requirements. Even though it's rated as a level three out of four, being the highest on the US State Department's travel advisory list, it is open. So if you wanna visit, game on and please bring me with you. Next up, we have the very affordable Southeast Asian destination of Cambodia, which although it's had less than 300 confirmed COVID-19 cases and zero deaths, it's still rated as a level three out of four on the State Department's travel advisory list. But that being said, it's open, it seems very safe, but there are a lot of requirements if you wanna go there. First, you have to submit a COVID-19 test, negative test result 72 hours before arrival and take a PCR swab test on site. You also have to have a $50,000 travel insurance policy and quarantine for 14 days upon arrival. And on top of that, when you get there, you have to deposit $2,000 just in case you contract the virus while you're there and you need any sort of medical attention or even burial services. So that's pretty intense, but Cambodia is open. If you meet the requirements, have the funds and wanna go, you can. Up next, we have Bermuda, Bahamas, and the Caribbean. So don't hate me for lumping all of these Caribbean and non-Caribbean countries together, but if I didn't, then this video would be twice as long and then you might hate me for that too. So I'm putting them all together because most of the islands in the Caribbean and in the Atlantic have between 10 and just 1,000 confirmed COVID-19 cases. So these are all destinations that are open to US citizens. They've had a very low infection rate and because of their remote locations, uh, they've been able to close their borders very early on in the pandemic and stop the spread. So most of the Caribbean island nations have reopened now and they all have pretty similar um, entry requirements if you wanna go for tourism. Most of these countries are requiring you to fill out an embarkation, disembarkation card first to uh, upload proof of negative COVID-19 test results, usually within about 72 hours of your flight. And also some of them are doing either temperature screenings or swab tests at the airport upon arrival. And some countries like Aruba, for example, are either requiring that you have your own private travel insurance or in Aruba, they have a $15 per day uh, national insurance plan that you're required to add. So I will link to more resources in this video's description, but the countries that are open right now in this area are Antigua and Barbuda, Aruba, the Bahamas, Barbados, which also just launched a new digital nomad visa program that you can check out over here. Dominican Republic, Grenada, Jamaica, St. Bart's, St. Lucia, St. Martin, 
St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and the Turks and Caicos. Fourth, we have Croatia, which reopened in July. The country has had about 6,000 cases total and is also a level three risk according to the U.S. State Department. European tourists have been able to enter without restrictions uh, since June and July, depending on the country you're from, but now U.S. citizens and other international tourists are allowed in as well. If you're American, you'll need to provide proof of accommodation, so to show that you're going for tourism purposes, present a negative PCR test and email their border patrol and let them know how long you're going to be staying for. You can send them a message at uzg.covid at mup.hr. Next up we have Dubai and the United Arab Emirates. Dubai has registered 65,000 cases of COVID-19 and is a level three by the US State Department, but it's open for tourism. And according to this video by Nas Daily, it might be one of the safest countries in the world to travel to during Corona. So check out his video if you have three minutes. And in it, he shows that full flights are not allowed to land at Dubai's airport. So they're taking this really seriously. If you want to go, you have to register a health declaration and show proof of travel insurance before your trip, but it's open. Next up on our list is Egypt, where land borders remain closed, but airports are open according to flattenthecurve.global. And Egypt has had about 100,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19 so far. And the US State Department has given it a level four travel advisory, which is their highest do not travel rating due to COVID. Um, that being said though, a lot of US travelers have been able to go there and word on the street is that you don't even necessarily need to present any specific requirements to be able to enter Egypt. Even though online I found that they are requiring um, proof of a negative COVID-19 test result. So it's a little bit up in the air right now, but unofficially people have been traveling there. And now we head over to French Polynesia, which reopened to US tourists in July. They've had only 139 COVID-19 cases to date and are only at a level two risk level according to the US State Department. So that's lower than all of the other countries on this list. To enter, you need to show a COVID-19 negative test result and pass another test upon arrival, and then you'll be in paradise. Tahiti, here I come. Next, we head over to Eastern Europe where Georgia is reopening, but they're doing things a little bit differently. Tourists aren't allowed into Georgia right now from the US, but you can apply for their new digital nomad visa where you can live there and work online for up to six months. That program was announced in July, so stay tuned for more information on that. And if you're looking for a place to live long-term while you're working online, check out my videos on Barbados and Estonia's digital nomad visa programs. And now we head over to the majestic continent of Africa, where Kenya is reopening. At least to all US citizens, except residents of California, Texas, and Florida, where I am right now, bummer, but the rest of you guys can go. Kenya has had 29,000 cases of COVID. It's a level three risk at the US State Department, and all you have to do is pass a screening upon arrival, and you're in. My 10th destination over in the Indian Ocean is the Maldives where there has been just over 5,300 cases and it's still rated a level three according to the State Department. To enter the Maldives though, it's pretty basic. You just have to pass a temperature check upon arrival and fill out an immigration and health declaration card and that's it. You'll be enjoying crystal clear water and Mai Tais in no time. Back over in North America, Mexico remains open and actually never closed during the pandemic but things are a little bit iffy when it comes to the level of safety and security there, as Mexico has had more than 500,000 COVID-19 cases and it's a level four risk 
by the U.S. State Department. The good news though is that there are no special travel requirements to go to Mexico right now. My sister just got back from a week in Cancun in the Riviera Maya and she said it was great and everything was fine. And you can also fly into Mexico City, uh, Puerto Vallarta, Cabo San Lucas, or really anywhere in the country right now without any restrictions, no quarantining, no COVID tests, no health declarations, nothing. So travel at your own risk, but we love you anyway, Mexico. Next up, back over in the Indian Ocean, we have Sri Lanka, which is apparently reopening tomorrow on August 15th. So hopefully by the time this video is live, it will be reopened to US tourists. Sri Lanka is a digital nomad paradise, and I haven't been yet, but it's super high on my bucket list, just off the coast of India. It's affordable, it's cheap, it's tropical, and it's a must see destination. Sri Lanka has also had less than 3,000 COVID-19 cases to date, but of course the US State Department still has it rated pretty high at a level three risk. But that being said, it seems like a safer bet than staying stateside. So maybe think about planning a trip. Turkey is also reopened to US tourists now, and the country has had upwards of 250,000 COVID-19 cases and is still ranked as a level three on the State Department's travel advisories. But it's pretty easy to get in there right now. All you need is what's called an HES code. So you need to text HES to the number 2023 with your nationality, passport number, birth year, and how many days you're going to be staying in the country. And I'll link to more information there in the description below. And before our bonus, last but not least, we have Zanzibar, which is in Tanzania. Tanzania has had just over 500 COVID-19 cases. It is a level three, according to the US State Department. And to get in, you need proof of a negative PCR test and fill out a health declaration card upon arrival, but no quarantining, easy peasy. And now to our bonus round, US territories. So let's not forget that US citizens can still travel to Puerto Rico, Guam, the US Virgin Islands, and don't forget the beautiful state of Hawaii out in the Pacific. So even though these states and territories are removed from the mainland, you can still go for tourism purposes, even though Puerto Rico right now is experiencing a spike in cases and they are discouraged anyone from coming unless you're going for essential travel purposes. So what do you think of this list? Where would you like to travel to first? Or are you gonna wait a little bit longer? Let me know in the comments below, like this video and subscribe if you're new here also let me know if there's a country that you want to know about next and i'll make a video on that and see you in the next travel video